Hi, Peter Charles here of Hook to Life Fly Fishing. And today we're going to tie the Wilson. Now this is a hot orange pattern and steelheaders like myself know the value of orange on a dull day. They, it really glows in the water. And I think this would be a, quite a useful pattern on when you're fishing on an overcast day. Also, uh, some caddis species have a lot of orange in the body. I'm thinking of October caddis, for example. And so if I saw uh, an October caddis emergence going on, I'd be pulling this fly out real fast. So anyway, let's get at it and look at the materials and start tying. I'm going to be using a size 8 traditional wet fly hook. My thread is 8 odd in black. The tag is going to be uni uh, mylar and I'm going to use the gold side. The tail is going to be gold and pheasant uh, tips. The body is going to be hot orange. And my throat's going to be this hot orange hen. And the wing is going to be gray mallard plank. So let's get tying. Now we don't have to be fussy about the body and where we tie it in because this is a wool body and you get lots of opportunity to cover things up. So like always, we're using the gold side so we tie it in silver facing us. Let's just cover those tag ends up. Okay, just check that. Looks good. Okay, now we're going to put our golden pheasant tippets on. Be careful when you're cutting these off that they don't move. If you saw my Peter Ross fly, uh, it the tips moved on me when I was tying them in, so try to get them to stay put, if at all possible. Very annoying when you go to tie them in and things move. Okay, tie with the black section just beyond the, where the body will start. There we go. Good, that one went in properly. You'll see when I publish the Peter Ross one, you'll see they're all ragged ended and it happens. You can see the difference in the underbody between using wool and floss. I would never have a messy underbody like that if I'm using floss. But with wool, I don't care. There we go. Nice neat wool body despite that ugly underbody. Now you might not have noticed what I just did with the wool. Uh, when I got to here, I did not want this to be super thick because I've got a big lump there. So I tied on the wool at an angle like this and I also tied it on tight. Then when I got into the middle where it was less underbody, I tied more of a this angle and looser. So as you can see, the middle's all nice and puffed up, and uh, it's, it's the bump has disappeared. Okay, now we tie in our hen. And you have two choices with this. You could tie it in as a throat or as a hackle. I, I prefer the hackle, so I'm going that route. As you can see, I've stripped one side. Always wind in front of the previous turn and push those barbs back. Try not to trap any, because that will make them stick forward. There's one that wants to be stubborn. Now in a previous video, I showed a problem where if you cut the quill off, you leave a stub. If you um, try to break it off, you can often you know, have the whole thing come apart on you, which has happened in one of my videos. So I'm going to show you another alternative, which I do routinely with my own flies. 
when I'm not tying pretty ones for videos, is what I do is I, I leave a little bit more of a stub. I don't try to get right to the end. There's a bit more of a stub. And then I can do one of two things. I can fold it in, like I just did there. Or on some of my larger flies, what I'll do is I'll fold that backwards. And so the quill ends up being in a U shape. It really locks it in. So that quill will never pull out. So you see my hackle's a bit standing up a little bit. I'm just going to use my uh, half hitch tool just to push them back so I can lay a couple of wraps back in there. There we go. Now for our mallard wing. I try to match up the tips. And I like a bit of a ragged look to it. I like my uh, mallard to kick around in the current. So we'll put that on about halfway down the length of the tail. Okay, and we'll check the position there. That looks good. And we'll whip finish. Okay, time for some head cement. Okay, there we go, the Wilson. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, orange is a great uh, color on really dull days, overcast days. Uh, steel headers use orange a lot. We love it. And steel header, migratory rainbow trout. So, I mean, if they like it, I can sure a resident trout would like it as well. And also keep it in mind when we've got things like um, uh, October caddis coming off as well. Anything, any uh, caddis with an orange body, this is going to work. So give it a try, the Wilson. Cheers.